Welcome back viewers. We are talking about the minimum wage in Cameroon. It stands at 36,270 uh, francs CFA and we have noticed that the minimum wage of other countries have increased but that of Cameroon has been stagnant for some time now and it is difficult for Cameroonians, an average Cameroonian, to live within 36,000 francs a month. So we spoke with an economist, our guest tonight is Song Derek. Song Derek is an economy. Song Derek, thank you so much for accepting to be our guest tonight on Talking Point. Why is it that the minimum wages of other African countries who have the same economic situation somehow like Cameroon have been increasing because they want to give their local population a better standard of living but that of Cameroon has been stagnant for over four or five years now? Good evening, and, and good evening to the million viewers of uh, Equinox. It's always a pleasure to be here, and I'm grateful for the trust and the confidence you've uh, given me to be here on this platform to, to share a worrying situation that touches the very core of Cameroonians, uh, the very core of the suffering masses of Cameroonians, which is the issue of salaries, and in this case, the minimum wage rate. It saddens my mind and it saddens Cameroonians to know that the minimum wage, wage rate in this country is as low as 36,270 francs. And with 36,270 francs, we least expect or we least know what we can do with that amount of money. If you're asking me the reasons that advance, that we can advance for this situation, why the minimum wage rate is uh, this low. First, I will tell you that the first thing is that our economy is weak. And the reason why the economy is weak is because we have refused to produce local, to stay local, and to consume local. And so the companies are not there. Secondly, I want to tell you that the war in the southern Cameroons has crippled the economy in this country so much that so much money is used, geared and uh, channeled towards purchasing of ammunition, fueling of armor cars that are going to kill Cameroonians, a very human resource that is needed that this country should grow from strength to strength. Also, you know that Cameroon is faced by many crises, many crisis situation. We could talk about the Central African crisis, the Boko Arams in the, in the far north, the Southern Cameroon Wars, and then worst of it, the worst thing that is keeping us at this level is the fact that there's a lot of leakages in the economy. Remember, we are crying about minimum wage rate, but we are seeing people arresting others for the theft of 85 million in their homes. We have seen uh, uh, ministers with 500 million in their homes, the former minister of health, we have seen. We have seen the minister of, um, uh, the former minister of uh, defense, alone, Edgar Mebengo, uh, in prison for alleged embezzlement of billions of francs, 95 billions, this money in the hands of individuals. We have also seen uh, 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 the former director of uh, in charge of salaries with fake accounts, up to 2,000 fake salary accounts. Where is this money going to? So you realize that one of the greatest problems in Cameroon is the fact that embezzlement has eaten so deep into the fabric of the country that few individuals are controlling money, whereas the suffering masses of Cameroonians do not have access to that money. So you talk about corruption and embezzlement. If people embezzle, it means that the money is there before embezzlement can take place. So some observers think it is a lack of political will. That is one of the reasons that um, the minimum wage of Cameroon has been stagnant for some time now. Are you of that same opinion that it is? It might be lack of political will. Of course, I think that Cameroon is limping. Economically, Cameroon is limping. Politically, Cameroonians have been failed. And socially, we don't know where we belong. 
And one greatest problem is that the Cameroon leaders need leadership. If the leaders are winning, they can increase. What is somebody going to do with 36,270 francs? Let's assume that in a town like Douala, where everything is expensive, a modern room will be as, let's say, an average modern room could be 25,000 francs. If you have a job, you have, you have to pay a room 25,000 francs. You have to take your transport every day. Let's assume you spend as cheap as 500 francs for transportation. For 30 days, that is 15,000 francs. Let's assume at work, during lunch, you have to take just a plate of food as cheap as 500 francs, which is rare in Douala. That would be 15,000 francs a month. What, is, what are you going to save? It means at the end of the month, we have not even talked about the feeding in your house. We have not talked about health. We have not talked about your dressing. At the end of the month, you realize that a lot of Cameroonians will be living and surviving by deceiving. By deceiving, and means that, I'm, I'm saying that, Cameroonians are going to borrow money in order to fuel their bills. And every other month, we are going to involve in debt. 36,270 francs as minimum wage rate is a way of punishing Cameroonians by telling Cameroonians that if your employer is paying you 38,000 francs, the employer is doing you a favor. The employer is paying at least above what the government has stated. And worst of all, let me say to you, um, uh, Anne, that if you are talking about 36 or 30, 36,000 francs, 200 and, uh, 36, 1,270 francs. Say MPS alone is going to still take part of that money. It's going to take at least 6,662 uh, francs, which is partly paid by the employer and partly paid by uh, the employee, which means by the end of the day, you, the employer that is paid 36,000 francs, you're going to go back home with maybe 33,000 francs. It's disheartening, and we must affirm with you that the political will is lacking. The economics too is lacking because we we do not have the industries. We export timber and import toothpicks. Where are the companies even? So we are limping. We are leaning on the foreign economy. That's why, for once, I had to share with the president's speech when he said that we are going to boost the home industries. But unfortunately, he has talked about slogans. We have celebrated slogans. It is very possible in Cameroon that we are told that we are going to start paying mobile money tax in December. And in January, it is implemented. We are going to start paying physical stamp in December. And in January, it is implemented. But the industries, what is productive, we say it and 30 years after, nothing happened. If care is not taken, and I must tell you that in 2035, where we think Cameroon is going to emerge, Cameroon is going to emerge into poverty, Cameroon is going to emerge into indebtedness, and it is you and I that are going to suffer, that are going to pay the debts of this nation. Uh, Mr. Song, Derek, you mentioned investments. We are going to come to the question of investing in the country. But now let's talk about the most recent uh, finance law. When you look at the finance law, we, know, we realize that the cost of fiscal stamps have increased, importation tax has increased, and that is also going to affect negatively other sectors. And now looking at the horizon, life is going to be a little more difficult for Cameroonians um, um, this year, 2023. And now, keeping the, the um, not willing, uh, like you mentioned, to increase um, the minimum wage in Cameroon, is it not impoverishing the already poor Cameroonian? You know that um, taxes are automatic stabilizer economically. But the sad story is that Cameroon is presently heavily indebted. We are indebted to international uh, IMF. International monetary funds were indebted with the World Bank. And remember, when you owe people so much that you cannot pay, the people start coming into your economy to find ways. That is why something like mobile money tax is an organized theft by the government. It's real organized theft in complicity with the communication company to steal the local person. 
how do you explain the, uh, explain the fact that my child is going to school, I have to send school fees through mobile money, I pay taxes. And when the child goes to withdraw the money, the child pays taxes. That is taxing you right to your wallet, right to your pocket. So I think the finance law, sometimes, you know, when I think of the finance law and those who vote it, I think that they are there for their belly. They are doing belly, uh, they are politicians. They think about themselves. After all, do they really feel the pinch of the common man? After all, do they really re uh, represent you and I? After all, were they really voted genuinely? Are they really uh, representing the worries of the constituency? If they are really uh, representing the worries of the constituency, the worries of the common man, how many times do they go back with the balance sheet to present to the people that this is the bill they had wanted us to vote? What is your opinion about this bill? But unfortunately, because the bill comes from the number one statesman, from the commander-in-chief of armed forces, from the number one patriotic man, and once it comes to the, to, to the parliament, they have no other thing but to veto it, to vote it, because they don't feel the pinch. They are the ones chopping the state's money. They don't go to the market to feel that the price of granite oil has increased from 1,000 to 1,600, more than 50 percent. Physical stamp from 1,000 to 1,500, 50 percent. And every other basic commodity that is increasing with fuel in the process of being increased, they don't care because it is only in Cameroon where a minister will fuel his car for hundreds of million in a month. We have seen those reports. It's only in Cameroon where a bag of cement will cost 16,000 francs instead of 4,250 francs. It is only in Cameroon where a, a, a trip of sand will cost 700,000 francs. It's sad because those people manipulate the money. They steal the money. They are not accountable to anybody. It is you and I who are here asking questions. I'm sure this interview you're doing or this, this, these things we are talking about, it still doesn't pinch them. It still doesn't matter because whether we survive or not, as long as Yaounde is breathing, as long as the minister are eating and they are full, as long as they have their cars, their fuel allowances, their house allowances, it doesn't matter if we die. It doesn't really matter to them. Seriously. Okay. And so, Derek, talking about investment, massive investment can be a proposed solution because massive inv investment means massive recruitment or employment and massive production. But that seems to be far first in our context. Why? Yes, you know, investment, normally for every country to grow, they need investment, be it home investment, foreign investment. But investment goes with characteristics of stability. Is the economy stable? Once the economy is stable, then investors will be invited automatically. Secondly, the laws. How favorable are the laws? And how transparent are the rules, the regulations that regularizes people to invest? If they are transparent, then it's cool. But I would think that Cameroon before now has been favorable. But the leaders had not opened their arms to investment. Because when we talk about investment, we should understand that the investment should favor the home industry. Remember in Cameroon now we have investment, but how much does the investment favor the home industry? We have seen Cameroon government encouraging TSA one x bet betting companies to invest the question is how favorable are those companies to cameroonians we have seen the chinese government with uh, the small kiosk and you drop your 100 francs coin you win something and they take the 100 francs coin they travel with it and produce chain to come and sell it to you at ten thousand francs it is the government that approved them According to the government, that is investment. So I, I think that, like I said, the Cameroon leaders need leadership. They need to put the common man, they need to put you and I at the center of it all. 
And if they do that, first, we need to look into our tax system. The company tax in Cameroon is 30% plus 10%, which is 33.33. That's too high. Meaning that if you are making a profit of 100 million, you have to pay the government 33 million. That's too much. The value added tax in Cameroon is 19.25%. Nigeria, neighboring Nigeria, is at five. When it was increased to seven, they, they were almost going to the street. So we need to look at our tax system in able to be to be able to make it to favor investment so that we invite the Cameroonians. Every economy survives because of the private sector not the government sector unfortunately the cameroon is different because it is a salarized economy it's an economy that believes in magical numbers if you are not employed by the government then you cannot survive on whereas it would have been the other way around it should have been the private sector boosting the economy and for the private sector to boost the economy it is for the government to encourage to subsidize to give them leeways to grow and by doing that they employ they employ cameroonians so that the cameroonians who are employed we are going to reduce me crops we are going to re reduce theft but unfortunately who cares who really cares because it will never affect them the politicians who think more about their bellies than you and I that they are supposed to represent. Mr. Song, Derek, uh, thank you for those clarifications there. We are about going to the end of our discussion. But before we part a company, we have to, you are an economist, and we have to join our voices to canvas for change, positive change in this country. What should be done concretely to ensure that Cameroonians have a better standard of living, improve the living conditions of Cameroonians? Yes, thank you very much, uh, and thank you for the trust. I would say the first things first is that the government must look for ways that will boost home production. We must produce local, we must consume local, and we must stay local. The government should go into more of capacity buildings. Our university must be changed from English-speaking university, grammar-blowing university, to university that we're going to create people that will create something after uh, graduation. That is very important. And then also, the government must lay down mechanisms to do checks and balancing of corruption, embezzlement. You realize that one of the canker worms that is eating deep into the fabrics of Cameroon is embezzlement. And the reason why there is embezzlement is because the president is going to ask you, who some le proof. If those who embezzle, because I believe that embezzlers are killers, they are killing our destinies. If we have to do checks of the embezzlers, we're going to help. Build our home industries, build capacities of the youth, build more industries that will employ us, improve our technology, if we are sending somebody out of the country to learn technologically, we are bringing back the person to develop in the country. I think it will do that and more than other economists. They have advised the country. Other people have advised this country. It is just because we have a deaf leadership that don't want to listen. And the simple reason why they don't want to listen is because they don't really care. They don't really care. What we keep saying seems to be noise. A lot of people more intelligent than myself have given advice to the government. But like the civil society that we represent, we will keep talking until Yaoundé, until the leaders decide to change, we will keep playing our part for the common man to be, ra to, to be raised to a better level in order to survive. Cameroon belongs to you and I, and if Cameroon has to survive, it is you and I that are surviving, it is you and I that have to build it. If we play our little role with a good leadership, then we will survive. Remember, I always say that um, people say Africans are made up of dictators. Yes, Africa needs enlightened dictators to, 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 to grow. Unfortunately, the kind of dictators we have protect more of their seats, more of their bellies than protecting the common man who has given them power on loan, on bone to keep. But it's sad.